Hi everyone. Good afternoon. Good morning, depending on uh, where you uh, where you're watching from. Uh, today was uh, the first of uh, of uh, a series of you know live sessions on digital marketing. And today we have the pleasure have the pleasure to have uh, with us uh, Karen Karen McCarthy. See, hello Karen. Hello. <laughs> It's so great to be here. So great to have you here today. Thank it's, you an absolutely, it's an absolutely honor to me. Uh, been following, I mean, I know you for a while, but I've been following you on social. It's always like so uh, much fun content, so uh, useful, and you make it so you make it seem so uh, so easy on social media. <laughs> so we, we we're gonna talk about talk about that <laughs> a bit later on. For to start with, I like to obviously tell everyone who is connecting uh, to say hello, uh, pop a message in the chat, say hello to me, to Karen, to us, to introduce themselves, who they are, what they do, um, and uh, share the life with others that you, uh, you think they could benefit as well from this uh, social media marketing session. Because we'll be covering lots of different topics, so the different uh, stories that Karen is going to share with us. And also, I'm going to share some of my <laughs> Instagram, some of my Instagram, now some of my social media struggles or well, uh, anecdotes as well, <laughs> which is related as well. And uh, yeah, basically that. And uh, we to start with, I like to well, I like if you, if you could uh, introduce yourself, Karen, and tell a bit about your story, who you are, what you do, coming from. People would love to know. <laughs> with pleasure well thank you so much for having me on it's great we go back a long way you and i now we've been through masterminds and such together so it's great to re-meet you on this journey but yeah so i'm karen um i'm irish if you can't tell from my accent but um i kind of specialize in simplifying social media for people who didn't grow up with it because i didn't grow up with it and i'm somebody who gets what it's like when you didn't grow up with social media and there's a lot of kind of learning curves and obstacles in the way i think when you didn't grow up with it that are not like insurmountable but they're there and it's just like there's just this little extra barrier that you have to kind of get over because we're not used to like waking up and sharing our breakfast with the world and not that you need to do that but you know there's just that little bit of a mindset shift almost in that when you didn't grow up with it so and like my my background would be in marketing like i have a degree in marketing but i graduated before facebook was a thing so <laughs> it was useless pretty much after that but um so i mean yeah i mean i didn't really get involved with social media until like like very late i would say like i remember even instagram when instagram came out i was just like oh some weird photo editing app for people to look, put their food on, you know, didn't really know what it was, didn't really care. Um, and I was working away in another job, just kind of, you know, very much offline, nothing to do with online. I kind of, I worked as a journalist for a while as well. So I kind of had a background around old school marketing and journalism. And then I went off and was running a company for someone else offline for about 10 years. And then in the middle of all that, I started a blog in Ireland about dog friendly places in Ireland because I had two little dogs and I wanted to go to places that were dog friendly, which there weren't many of at the time. So I basically just started going to places and writing about them when they were dog friendly. And then in order to have photos that looked a bit cooler because I didn't have a camera, I downloaded this photo app Instagram and started taking photos but I was like I remember being like afraid what if I post this publicly and somebody sees it I remember that being the thought and talk about not growing up with social media that's where I was like but like what if like who's going to see it I almost wanted to know who was going to see it when I think of it now the logic like but there are questions that I'll get from people now it's like well who's going to see that if I post it it's just like everybody or nobody who knows but you know I just I hadn't a clue what I was doing and it was really just something to support this blog which was just a bit of a passion of mine but that kind of snowballed a bit with that and I started I think because of the writing background I started getting into content creation and I started like helping people do content creation and the social media side things because I was doing the dog blog and then I kind of freelanced randomly sort of in my spare time to companies that needed me to help them with their with the writing side of the social media in particular and that kind of started something like hang on a second this is something else and I got offered like a job by a company would I come and do this and I was working full time at the time so I couldn't do it so I said I kind of started doing part-time with them kind of at the 
weekends and evenings of just basically writing content for social media. And that pretty quickly turned into a full-time thing. And I was able to quit my job, <clears throat> move to France, uh, which is where I think I, I met you first. Well, like I was in France when I met you. Um, Cause my idea, I always wanted to just go and live in France was just what I wanted to do. And then when I had this job that I was kind of independent of location, I could do that. So it, for me, it was like, there was no plan. It just sort of happened in this really random way of like, yes, I have a background in marketing, but I went away from all that very much because I didn't grow up with social media. And to be honest, I didn't really like marketing until social media came along because I felt like marketing was very, you know, the way we were taught anyway was for like trick them into buying something and, yeah. you know, run before they realize. And I was like, I don't think I yeah. want to spend my life like this. Yeah, I think you say that actually because when I started marketing, which I started marketing uh, in Valencia ages ago, we're not going to get into that. <laughs> Facebook wasn't a thing. I mean, it was just coming out. It came out a few years later that, um, and just social media wasn't even a, a thing. So it was more marketing based in finance and statistics in tactics on the market, uh, yeah. and strategies in the internationalization, things like not social media these days is quite, quite a big, big, big uh, part of uh, marketing without social media. It's, yeah. it's, it's, you can you can actually promote you can there's no brand that can live without social media right no yeah it changed so much like massively and I, I mean i do think i mean for all the faults that we'd say that we don't like social media I think it changed marketing for the better personally because I feel like it made people accountable and it made people have to do things from a more genuine place because you're talking to the person, you're you're in contact, you've got to represent the brand in a certain way and you've got to be accountable more so than you would have to have been before. So I kind of like that it did that, even though, yes, there are the other sides of it that's like, oh, look, I'm living on my phone and I'm spending my entire life on Instagram. There's that kind of side of it too, which we want to maybe move away from. But I do like, and it kind of, it it drew me back into marketing after like, I mean, I spent five years in my degree and I said, that's it, I'm done, never again, I'm not touching marketing ever again. And now things have changed slightly, but it, for me, it's the creative side of it that I felt brought me back, that it was like the marketing, yes, but more the content writing and the creativity that comes with social media and that connection and everything as well, which I really enjoy. But, you know, like when I met you at that stage, then we were in that mastermind together, I like, and this is where I kind of, you know, resonate with my audience a lot with this as well. Not only did I not grow up with social media, but I had zero desire to put myself in front of any camera, I say, as I'm going live or go live ever. I was just like, I'm not doing it. And that's it. And you probably remember me in the group. I was just like, I'm just not doing it. And I didn't do it for a long time. And I like, I kind of very feel strongly about like, you shouldn't have to put yourself out there in ways you're not comfortable with. And I think it won't work if you do, because if I had gone live two, three years ago, four years ago, whenever it was, I would have come across nervous and anxious and not trustworthy. And it wouldn't have done my business any favors, but I allowed myself to get comfortable and I tapped into what my strengths were as a communicator, which is more the writing side of it and lent on that to get the confidence, to get the experience, to get myself to a level where I was, okay, now I feel like I can put a picture up and now I feel like I can go on stories. All right, now I'll try a live and did it in my own way rather than trying to replicate what everyone else was doing because yes, lives work. Yes, you know, we're doing live here. Lives are fantastic but you have to do it in your own way. Like this kind of live, I much prefer the idea of like having a conversation with you or like I've just did a live on Instagram doing audits. That makes sense to me. But the kind of like, hey guys, I'm just having a thought doesn't match my brand, doesn't make any sense to me to do that. And I'd feel uncomfortable doing it as well. So, you know, it's about, I think that's the other part of this is like you, you know, especially again, when you didn't grow up with social media, giving yourself the permission to find what's most comfortable to you and where you can kind of shine as the person behind the brand and to not feel the pressure. Because I've seen people do it wrong as well when they kind of take the advice and they just go, right, put on the camera, go live, and you're watching it going, oh God, oh God, please stop. Like it's, I'm like, I feel, I feel your nerves and it comes across as almost like they're pissed off or something. So, you know, it's, it's like, yeah, I think that's a big part for me on my journey was almost having to go against what the best advice was because it was from people who were doing really, really well and it was good advice, but it wasn't good for me. 
And that's why I think I continue to take a really individual approach with my clients. And I still do the one-to-ones rather than group because I feel like each person has their own individual needs. Each business has their own individual needs. And if you're not kind of aligning with that, you are going to have problems with your growth because you're kind of doing something that's outside of your comfort zone. And, you know, there's a lot of talk about pushing through, but I think there's a, a fine line between doing something for the sake of it versus being ready to do it as well. Yeah, I can't do that. This idea. <laughs> I didn't grow up with social media. And you? Yeah. So, <laughs> you're closer to me, though. It's, I say you're closer to having grown up with it than I am. You're definitely younger than me, anyway. <laughs> I don't think so. Don't think so. Don't, don't think so. Because the, you get people sometimes say, oh, you're younger, younger than, than uh, uh, you're much younger. But if you look young, but not that young. So many years from that working. Uh, but it, it, it's, it's good that you, obviously, you, you mentioned all about the, the story. And I like when you say, obviously, you started with some marketing and then, and then, and then you got into like the content creation side of things and, and uh, helping a specific niche of people, like business owners or entrepreneurs that are certain age, in your case, over 35, or in any case, people that are. You know, and um, it could be even you know they they're not used to they don't they don't really they run a business they don't have the yeah. time or do or do, do they have the time because you can always find time and not having the time is a big excuse that people say you can always make time for things so if you prioritize them they, they make sense for your business so then it's then it's like something like they 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 uh, come across with challenges like oh my god how do I share this how do I yeah. What do I do with Instagram? Is Instagram good? Is it TikTok or is it YouTube? Or what I do with videos? And uh, that's the part that I mean, all, for myself, for my own experience, mm. uh, we are, I always encounter with many different challenges. Is it the time? Is it how many times I post on social? Is it then this type of channel is better than the other? Is so the, I, I imagine, obviously, you 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 come across with all of these people yeah. and constantly every every week and every month clients people that you help so what are the what are the the top the, the biggest challenges that you see or the, the biggest uh could be challenges or could be uh launch people yeah launch yeah crucial, right? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a lot of the things you said. It's those kind of little questions of like, where do I go? Which platforms? It's all these kind of little questions. But I find, I think often it comes down to two things. It comes down to a, a mindset block that you have around social media that you're afraid of in some way. You hate it. I often, the first thing my clients go, well, I hate social media. That's my problem. And they don't want to spend time on it. So they've got this really negative association with it. And then other times, you know, it's it's like it's, there's imposter syndrome as well. But the other side of outside the mindset blocks, then it's not knowing who your ideal client is. That's often the biggest problem that people, especially if you've been in business long enough, you kind of almost think you do know and you're just like, oh, yeah, sure. My clients, I have clients offline. But it's like when you get into social media and you get into writing content, you've got to know them down to the like absolute specifics of the demographics and psychographics and all that kind of thing, because you're having a conversation, you're opening a conversation with your content. And if you want them to resonate and get back to you, you've got to be speaking their language. So it's got to go a lot deeper than it probably ever has before than you did as an offline business. So like that's a, normally when anyone has a problem, it's one of those two things. And it comes to it's a mindset block around social media or it's I don't know who my ideal client avatar is. Like as a if you can just boil it down to two things, those are the two things to do. But then then I think people often overcomplicate it where I mean, because if you if you like have a business selling, I don't know, like cushions or something and you decide you're going to go do social media, you could spend 24 seven on social media doing stuff for your business if you're trying to be on all the platforms and do all the things it's just not possible it's not feasible as one person and you have to let that idea go and then you come back to okay I have X amount of time every week to spend on social media. Where is it best that I spend my time? If that's like, what's realistic and getting very honest with yourself. And if you're, if you're saying I only have five or six hours a week 
to put into social media, then it's like, okay, well, then you need a much more longer term strategy that's kind of around the SEO sides of social media that's much more maybe YouTube or Pinterest focused that doesn't require constant nurturing and engagement and posting as platforms like Facebook and Instagram. So it's knowing your limitations in terms of time as well as resources and being honest with, you, with yourself around that. But then also, I like when I mean, I focus my clients on Facebook and Instagram and I tell them to forget everything else for when they're working with me because you can't do all the platforms you can only realistically manage well two platforms at a time as one person so do that master them and then see if you can add on something else but like and to pick those two like I always pick Facebook and Instagram because generally most businesses have an audience on one or either or both of those platforms but if you if you don't know if you're like well I sell you know skateboards to 13 year olds then okay maybe Maybe you should just forget uh, Facebook unless their parents are buying for them and go straight to TikTok or something. So then it goes again, goes back to the other side of it, knowing your ideal client and where do they spend their time. If you have decided, I love Instagram and I'm going to put all my time in there, but then you do a little bit of research and your clients don't care about Instagram and they're never on there, you're wasting your time. And they're all, they're all on Pinterest or they're all on TikTok or whatever it is. So you need to ask yourself those questions first. So first ask yourself, what are the kind of beliefs I have around myself, my own limitations and my social media and try and get rid of them as best you can or overcome them or face them in some way. And then go into your research of like, who is my ideal client? How are they spending their time online? And therefore, where should I spend my time mostly online to serve them? And that's if you, if you can do that, you're going to be fine. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I perfectly relate. I totally relate because in terms of the mindset, I mean, it's all about mindset in business. Obviously, we're respecting to the life of what's in the replay. Uh, just remind, remind, remind them they can ask questions as well. The thing is, like, we only can see the questions if they log, if they click on the on the stream yard uh, link, so they can pop the questions. If okay. not, we can we can answer the questions afterwards, so they can leave any comments anytime when they're watching the replay. That would be fantastic. Okay. And, uh, and in terms of the mindset blocks, it's, it's a great it's a great that you, you mentioned that because mindset blocks are in terms of when you're running your, your business, mindset blocks are for for everything. Uh, uh, when it comes to marketing, whether it's uh, spending time or working with uh, with different professionals, it's always uh, it's always uh, the big big, big uh, block is that people are not uh, uh, you know you have some sort of like um, limitations thinking oh i'm not going to be good enough or my brand is not going to be you know this video is not going to be good, you're not good enough to share on social mm -hmm. or i'm not going to connect enough with this blog and i think it's all about also it's all about having a strategy like you say uh, getting uh, support by professionals hopefully like you or other social media professionals that they can uh, they can advise you to be this to be youtube to be facebook to be this type of content uh, this is your idea client getting to know your idea client is is the key for everything mm -hmm. and then when it's gathering data feedback connecting with them and uh, testing things out sometimes because not all the content is going to work from my own experience sometimes uh some uh, some posts i don't know i don't measure the post by likes i measure by shares or saves or people commenting or, or interacting sometimes the ones that you expect and they expected the they're going to be the worst they're going to be the best ones people get yeah. so much so much value out of them the ones that relate to your personal life to your struggles to your they're like oh my god yeah this is related the the, the ones that i tend to do similar to others content like others the, the ones that get lost in, in the, you know yeah. in the in the in the world of social media they get lost on instagram because they're like oh my god is this i already seen this post yeah 50, 50 times so so i think it's about being being personal as well it's being, being unique so yeah. in terms of so what, what would you say then would be the best already you already talked about this uh the best ways to tackle these challenges mindset is about you say about asking those questions to yourself and knowing yourself very well and then uh, look at the <laughs> famous dog <laughs> yeah famous dog <laughs> 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 and, but, join us as well if uh, <laughs> 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 then that's obviously a fun to tackle but um would be the 
the many ways to tackle those challenges to face. You know, to, how would it be? Uh, you say, obviously, you mentioned you have to focus in on uh, some channels. But for example, I'll give you an example from healthcare, healthcare businesses. Uh, I, I work with a with some healthcare businesses. Sometimes they they find hard to actually uh, create content that is they 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 are scared sometimes about scaling, saying some content and is and I always recommend maybe small stories and things that people can relate. So do yeah. you have any advice for those that make that blog or in terms of they don't know what to share or they are afraid of sharing stuff that can be yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so this is like, you know, co you know, content writing. Content writing is is such an important skill to develop as any kind of business owner, and it doesn't mean that you have to be a writer. Like okay, yes, if you're a writer, you're going to have a bit of an advantage, but it doesn't mean you have to be a skilled writer to do it. It means you just need to understand again who your audience is. I feel like I I should wear this on my head. No, your avatar, I say it too many times a day. But like if you if you talk to your ideal clients and you could poll them on Instagram or you could talk to them, ask them to get in a call with you or something and ask them what are the what kind of things they want to see what are the problems that they have and your content you know if you want someone to follow you you're asking them for something so what are you giving them in exchange for that what's the reason they're going to hit the follow button and even like put yourself into the kind of like you know human <laughs> role yourself and when you hit follow on a business page why usually it's because there's a personality behind it usually because there's something that resonates in the message or they solve a problem that you're dealing with that you have and you want to come back and watch more of their content but you know you have to really and this is where you know sometimes i think businesses struggle with free versus paid content and they kind of hold back their best stuff because they're afraid well if i just give it all away especially service businesses sure why would they pay me if i just do that <clears throat> but if you you give out your best content or your best advice on your content you're going to gain their trust you're going to gain them as 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 clients eventually so it's about you know it comes it comes down to again the first thing of knowing your avatar talking to them and you can do this both passively and on calls with them get onto a call with them and say hey if i was to create content what would you want me to create around what would be helpful for you to see what are the things you're struggling with right now get into those kind of conversations with them pull your audience on instagram what would you be more interested in seeing this or this get them to vote you know put in all those different or a question box what's the one thing i could help you with today if i was to create a piece of content or go in and direct message some of your most active followers or the ones that you consider to be your ideal clients and go hey how are you doing um I hope you don't mind me reaching out. I'm about to create some content. I was wondering if there's anything I could help you with that if I create a piece of content will be worthwhile to you. I've often done that. People are just like, wow, geez, thanks a million. Yeah, like I'd love to know about hashtags or I'd love to know about whatever. And they'll give you the content. And then if you if you don't have the audience to do that, then go on to other accounts that are similar to you that are growing, that are bigger. Doesn't It, it might be exactly like you in your industry, in your country, or it might be an American version of what you do that's further along or something slightly different but related and look at there and i always like to look at it on the desktop so i can kind of quickly hover over all the posts and notice which are the which are the top three performing posts that they had and what was it dissect that about it now you're not going to copy them you're basically going to look and say okay it seems like in the last six months that all the posts that did the best of theirs were about this topic or this and this topic. So that's a topic that people are interested in. Let me just have a quick look. And I like to do it really quick so I don't get over influenced by it just to be like, okay, they're kind of talking about, okay, I get where they're going grand. And then I go off and go, how could I make that better? Or how could I make that more relevant to my audience? And in my case, so in my case, if I went and looked on someone's account and I see all of their trending posts are about hashtags, then I say, okay, chances are my audience are also going to be interested in posts about hashtags. But my audience are not their audience. My audience are the 35 plus who didn't grow up with social media. So I can put a spin on that about hashtags when you didn't grow up with, you know, when, 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 when you saw a hashtag, it meant number, you know, something like that, that I bring it more into what my ideal client will be talking about. And I make it much more specific, but I'm kind of on a winner because I know I've done my research and I can see that generally when people in my niche post about that topic, it tends to do well. So I think that's a good place to start and to not be afraid to test things out as well and to not get overly attached. And this goes back to our mindset again, to not put personal attachment into a post. It's like, it's a post at the end of the day, you put it up there. If they don't like it, they're not saying, I don't like you. They're just saying, nah, 
You know, they're just like, um, they don't say anything. They're just kind of like, okay, scroll. It's nothing against you. It just means, okay, I didn't quite get it that time. Maybe I'll redo the same topic because I do think the topic is relevant. Maybe I'll redo how I present that. And in two weeks time, I'll try it again and see what happens. Or maybe I'll check, are my hashtags working? Maybe I'll check what was the time of the day I posted. Like look in and look at it as feedback. Look at it as research so that you can do better next time. Don't take it as, well, that's that. I did my post on hashtags. They didn't like it. So I'm never posting again. They don't deserve me. Like, you know, don't take it personally. They're just, it's not that they're saying anything about you. They're just literally scrolling and you didn't stop, you didn't stop the scroll. That's all. So the first, like, and you know, getting into that with content creation, if you're, if you're not getting the engagement you feel you should be getting, the first thing to look at is your, your image or your, if it's a carousel, the first sort of, um, slide of the carousel because that's the what stops the scroll and you haven't stopped the scroll more than likely so how can you change that first of all to stop the scroll if you have stopped the scroll or you feel like you've done a good job doing that your next protocol is your headline your hook did that get them to click more or did they just get stopped in the scroll lost them in the in the headline and, and they moved on so these these little sort of you know there's journeys in the content in the content consumption as well that they're going to stop and stop and stop and then they'll take an action did you ask them to take an action how often do you go on instagram and just go that's really cool and you go off i know i do i'll like forget to like something or comment unless they say what do you think do you like this give us a heart go to the link in the bio save this for later or else i'll just forget and then i might sometimes i'll even go that's really good and then the thing will refresh i'm like oh crap where's that gone who, who was that and you can't find it so always ask them to take some kind of an action and it, you know it doesn't always have to be sales related it can be you know something softer than that but if they don't know to take an action they're in scroll mode you're interrupting what they're doing so if you're going to interrupt them make it worth their while and then ask them to take a specific action as well wow i'm going away <laughs> <laughs> uh, by all <laughs> the content and uh, in just a few minutes yeah, it's so much. Uh, yeah, so much more more content and advice coming coming out. Uh, yeah, I, I get. I know you 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 know the, the stuff because I follow you for a while. So yeah. <laughs> people are people are um, joining today. Who joining today? Uh, I, I would recommend them, them to follow you uh, on Insta as well uh, because of the content that that the current search is is it's entertaining, but it's also useful and in so many ways. To me and uh, Jennifer, who's helping me with the with social media right now, was she was she's, she's been away for a few days. I say hello to her. But uh, <laughs> uh, working on uh, university stuff and uh, and I'm struggling now with managing the stuff because she's not she's not helping this, these days. Yeah. Not been able. Uh, you need help to, to manage social media. That's my first advice. If if you are listening and the other side and watching, <laughs> you always need help. And uh, the, I like I like. Uh, uh, current content because you know it's useful and stuff like that and, and things like you know um we're gonna go now into um we're gonna change into like instagram because mm -hmm. current uh, specialized instagram and uh to grow grow, uh, grow your instagram for your business or for um you know the strategy in instagram and i think this is, is one of the platforms that i've been it's been massively growing uh mm -hmm. testing new features testing is yeah. always something new uh, yeah. real sites whatever it's like oh my god uh what's going on here there's so many different ways that you can create content what the hell is going on what do you what should you uh, be <laughs> using what should you not be using you see they've just gone mad they're just like but you know and, and i think that's another thing as well like and especially to like my audience who didn't grow up with social media again that can be overwhelming when you're just like hang on i was just getting i was just getting used to post what the hell's a reel like you know it can be really like i don't want to know what and even when i when they came out reels i was like oh crap do i have to learn this now you know so it is it does feel like more to do but actually what they're doing i think as well i mean they obviously want to keep people on the platform that's their overall objective but they are giving us as content creators 
choice in how we show up and lots of ways for us to connect with our audience, which I think is fantastic because as somebody who prefers to write, let's say, or if you have different strengths in your communication skills, now you're spoiled for choice on Instagram and how you can show up. So I think what it's doing, it's making the platform much more versatile that now, no matter who you are, where your strengths lie, you're going to be able to connect with your audience in some way on Instagram because of all of the little tools they're giving you. So and they do, you know, they do like when you you use all the tools. So I think it's, you know, it's it's presented us with like needing to create our own kind of separate strategy for Instagram alone, based on all the little things that we can do, because each little area of Instagram serves as a way for us to nurture the audience. So like we've got our feed posts, we've always had them. Now we've got reels, which are just on fire. Everyone does a reel, they they blow up. We still don't really understand what's happening because they haven't given us the insights, which they hopefully will be doing in the next couple of months. But they're definitely, you know, because they're, they're trying to also keep up with the other competition. TikTok is obviously massively blown up and it's all about short form video content. And that's what they're trying to do with reels. Then you've got guides, which I love. I think guides are really really good way to repurpose your content uh, establish yourself as the expert then you've got IGTVs your longer form video which is their kind of version of YouTube I guess um, then you've got the live videos which you can do to obviously nurture your audience to connect with them and then you've got stories to sort of share the day-to-day -day more personalized sort of behind the scenes or that kind of stuff as well so you've got a ton of ways to connect with people but to not drive yourself crazy um, you need to first of all go back to like okay, how much content can I create? How much can I create on a weekly basis in a consistent way without driving myself insane? Start from that point and it might be whatever, like when I first was starting out or even like a couple of years back, it was a lot less than I can do now because you'll get faster at it. You'll have more content to repurpose the more you do it. So you, you don't have to start off with doing seven reels a week or something ridiculous like that look at yourself honestly and say okay and what I like to do is sit down on a I do it now actually on a Sunday where I'll take a couple of hours on a Sunday and I'll batch my content for the week so what I can do at the moment consistently is five posts a week and now this is my job I'm doing this for a long time so it's probably more than a lot of people can do I think if you want to grow on Instagram you want to be doing three posts a week anyway if you want to grow if you can do more than that fantastic try not to do less than that so I would try and hit and again check in with what's working in your niche in your industry in my industry at the moment what's working really well are carousels and reels so i am doing an alternating kind of schedule which gives me the checkerboard effect theme that i have on my instagram account which is carousel reel carousel reel carousel reel and i just alternate and alternate so one week there'll be three carousels and two reels the next week could be the other way around and for me that's working i'm growing at a nice steady pace and it's all good i do a live once a week i might increase that to twice a week now when i when i have the time i do stories pretty much daily monday to friday maybe an extra one at a weekend and that is a steady growth content strategy for instagram but again i'm coming from a place where i teach this stuff i know it pretty well i've practiced it a lot it doesn't take me as long if you're not at that stage yet that's totally fine and peel it down a bit and instead say okay can I do three posts a week? If so, could I do two posts, regular or carousel? And could I do one reel? Would I be able to do one reel? Would I be able to dip my toe and see how a reel feels? And if you're going to start in reels and you haven't yet gotten into reels, the best thing to do, and this goes kind of for any content, is watch them. Be a consumer first of the content before you create it. So you can understand what's working. You can see what you like. You can look at trends. You can kind of get an idea of what reels are rather than just kind of going, okay, I'm putting on a reel um you know and you don't really know what you're doing like have a look like you can literally browse reels and like give yourself a 20 minute spree of just scrolling through and watching and but like objectively noticing okay why did i like that what happened there or again going on to your competitors or similar accounts and looking at go into the reels tab that they have and notice you'll see some of the reels might have gotten 2,000 views other ones might have gotten 222,000 views <clears throat> and what's the difference why what happened is it and usually with reels it's trending sounds it's something quick and snappy it's something that loops it's all these kind of things but again if you're beginning with reels just start by watching them and then I would recommend starting with an intro reel to introduce yourself of like who I am what I do using some kind of a trending saying to do that and just build on it from there and see and if you can maintain that level of consistency you will fly with Instagram and you will really start to enjoy it and actually like reels when I first my first reel I think took me about four hours to do <laughs> and now I can do <clears throat> probably 
three reels in about 30 minutes at this stage now, which was not the case at the start at all. So it's like, give yourself a break if you're starting out and let it be, let it become, you know, you'll get faster at it and just, but the most important thing I think with, and it's Instagram related and any content strategy related is that you don't overestimate what you're able to do on a consistent basis. Cause it's much more important that you can consistently show up. So if that's one, two posts a week at the moment, fine, just do that. And then you'll get faster and it'll become three, four, five, and so on and so forth. And just, you know, notice what areas of Instagram, like where are you drawn to as a both consumer and a creator is so are stories fascinating to you? Do you feel more alive when you're doing stories or more like, you know, in your zone? You know, if, the, if you have a lot of content on your profile already, look into guides. I think guides are not being used enough at all because it's the first time we can repurpose our content on Instagram and you can basically become the expert in the field. Like think about your content categories of like, what do you talk about on your Instagram? Make guides out of them. And it literally will take you two seconds. If you don't know about guides at all, I do have a blog on my website you can check out. That is a little tutorial of how to create your first guide, but they are so valuable for anyone. If it's your service provider or product provider, they're brilliant for just, and then you can, you can direct people to them. Like I have one on hash tags and I often get direct messages from people going how do I do hashtags and rather than me giving them a free tutorial I just go hey I have this guide here you go and I give them the link and off they go and they're happy out so it's it's really really good way to sort of establish yourself as an expert and just repurpose your content as well so that was a little answer <laughs> yeah that was that was a, a lot of uh, yeah <laughs> a lot of advice um well from you, you know, I always like to, to um, refer to people um, as my own experience because what, I, what we do, I mean, uh, we try to keep consistency, but we notice the difference between when we publish consistently uh, yes. two to three posts a week rather comparing with when we don't post or once a week because we've been yeah. busy because we've been with lots of different projects so we weren't sure whether to share these, whatever, blah, 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 blah. blah. And it, it really, it really makes a difference. I mean, mm -hmm. in terms of everything. And and um, but my next, my next question will be more about because I know I know many people ask me as well, and I have seen it. People are worried about the amount of likes, amount of followers, mm -hmm. rather than the quality of them. And I and I know it's I I seen a couple of your posts as well talking about this this matter, this topic because. It's a big one. People, yeah, they believe business owners, entrepreneurs, or, or or even marketers. If some people be, they believe that oh, ten thousand followers is better than this and that. But at the end of the day, in my opinion, it's better to have uh, five hundred of your idea clients than mm. ten thousand of people that don't yeah. never could buy from you. They know yeah. your idea client. They know your target audience, and yeah. they just. Uh, because they want to see content that they want to copy or because you're funny yeah. or whatever. Yeah. I think yeah. it's quality or quantity. And if, yeah. if if you choose one, which I guess which one you could you could go for, <laughs> uh, what would be the advice on on in terms of measuring your efforts? How do we measure if our posts have been successful? Which you mentioned before the no likes, no likes obviously. Yeah, so like vanity metrics out the window in terms of the likes and all that, not important. The followers you have, not important. What's important is the sales you're getting. You know, really, if we, if we go down to it, like forget the post. Like, I mean, often what I'll see is the posts that I have to get the most vanity metrics don't convert to sales. The ones that get the least vanity metrics will actually result in people signing up with me. You know, so it's it's like you're you're going to have a an array of content where you're going to have the ones and like they're they're all necessary so you kind of have like engagement posts where you know it's going to get the likes you know people are going to go oh yeah and they're going to comment and it's going to be wow and then the next post you put up is going to get higher engagement or higher more eyes on it because of that post so the next post is going to be hey why don't you work with me link, link in the bio that kind of stuff so you need to be that's where planning is important overall strategy is important with that but yeah like if you are if you look at your google analytics which I know you'll be a fan of and you're seeing you have let's say you get 10 likes on every post but you're getting 20 sales a day from Instagram I think you're all right you know <laughs> like it's it's that's kind of really the only thing you really need to worry about is like the sales you're getting from your business and are people coming from Instagram are they taking action are they reaching out to you in direct messages so so sometimes like and, and, you know and having said that like yes you want to make sure things are going in the right direction so when you check into your insights and I would check in once a week in a way the way the reason I like to check my insights sites every week on Instagram is to see 
what content should I continue to create? So if I look at in the last week, this post way outperformed these two, and it was about this topic, which actually did the same the week before, then I know, great, well, that's another one to keep going with in next week as well. So it's good for content creation to check in on your insights, but like overall engagement is what you're looking for in terms of, I much more prefer to see comments and I'll, I'm, I'm actually trying to see, can I, have more comments than likes sometimes i'm always trying to see like stop get them commenting more and forget the likes and see if i can do that saves i love as well even though there's always this myth going around that saves are worth more and there's no like bonus point system or anything like that it's just that like yes if somebody goes to the trouble of saving your content it means that they're they're thinking about coming back to it later which is longer you know it's, it's a more of an interaction than tap on the like button so that's what people mean when they say that it's like it's not measured differently it's just like if you think about it logically if you save something it means you have the intention to go back to it maybe you'll forget about it and you never will but you've the intention it, it hit you that much that you're like i want to see this again i want to save that so that's a really good metric to look at because people it means people especially if you're teaching it means that they like wow this was really valuable i learned something i want to keep this to refer to it later so you know you're on to something there so other than that comments definitely great but like profile visits you know how many people are going to your profile from that post and also notice what your call to action is like if you said on your post if you want to know more about this there's a link in my bio to whatever then that's the call to action you were trying to get them to take so did they take it or was it more about comments like what was the action they took based on the action you told them to say if you said save this for later and you got a load of saves great your call to action worked so looking at that correlation as well is, is important in that but yeah like overall it's about the sales that you make with it that's what you're that's what you're there for with instagram at the end of the day you want to make you know your business you're trying to make sales and, and like if you're the other thing to look at as well in a kind of a side thing is like if you are getting people to visit your profile on instagram but you're not getting the clicks to your website then there's something wrong with your bio so it's like looking at all of these little signs it's like okay loads of people came onto your post because you got your hashtags right or whatever happened you did good engagement they looked at it your call to action was go to my profile click the link in the bio to read my blog or to join my facebook group whatever it was they all did that they went to the link they went to look at your bio and they decided to not click it they didn't go to your facebook group. they didn't take the action so there's something wrong there in how you have described yourself they went to your bio and they were like oh no that's not what i thought this was and they didn't follow you or they didn't take the action go to the link or whatever so look at those little things and just make sure it's all adding up that's more important to check that than the likes i would i would say <laughs> yeah sorry sorry i've been adding this all these comments i love this, I love this. <laughs> because because I, I feel like or whoever is watching, I know someone is watching right now, but people have been watching and then leaving, and people will watch the replay because I know sometimes you know very well some people are now busy with work or yeah. having meetings, but then after meetings, they will join us and they will watch it later on. So it'd be good for them to have like a little uh, a summary of what, we, what we've been discussing. And, and it's uh, in terms of going back to the, the goals and, and, and the metrics, it really goes down to what what your business what your business calls but then also uh, things that bring in bring it back uh, if you run a business bring it something back to your business because it could be a it could be a comment with someone that you're building a connection or meaningful connection from someone that is a, there's an opportunity for business in the future maybe not now but that person is commenting your post and you can feel is your ideal client and then you're building that a sort of relationship because yeah. social media is about relationships, it's about building relationships, and um, and I feel like some some um, I, I don't I, I don't I'm not a social media expert, but I know obviously clients ask me we are more the SEO and the PPC and other mm. other strategies, but I, I know clients uh, ask me and, and ask people that work with social media experts uh, same questions. Oh, why do I need social media if people are buying from my website SEO and then. They come in here. Why do I need this and that? There's mm. no need for that. Why I'm paying my campaigns and people are buying through my campaign? But I always say that uh, is your uh, is is kind of like how would they say uh, uh, from from uh, is is the is the face of your brand as yeah. as, as well as your website. Uh, when people are going to check your website, it looks professional. Your brand looks professional, and they they start trusting more and uh, you build you you uh, you kind of like building that uh, that uh, that uh, you know that trust with them but then yeah. also if they go to your profile and they yeah. see nothing exactly. they, they start like thinking oh why are these people 
they don't have Facebook, they don't have Instagram, or they have one post, or even when you see someone that has no uh, no bio, no content, and it's yeah. like it doesn't really show any any trust or any values or anything on the brand. Yeah. So take the opportunity to have that as your brand yeah. exposure, because otherwise uh, it would affect maybe not directly, but and directly your brand and your your sales in, in some yeah. ways. Yeah. Absolutely. And like, I think people underestimate how much people rely on social media to make these buying decisions, but you may not see it actually happening when you go into your insights in terms of Google Analytics, because it might, like, and I'll often do this, I'll search somebody on Instagram and look at them and then go, yeah, I want to buy that. And I'll go into my laptop and buy it. But they don't know they, there's no thing saying she did this. She went to Instagram, and then they're not seeing that. They're just saying they're what they think I've done is directly put in their their you know just knew them and put it in, but that's not what happened. I found them through Instagram, so <clears throat> it's it's hard to measure sometimes in that way. We don't see the value, so there's that side of it. But then it's exactly what you said. It's like it's a trust element. Like your website is very very carefully curated to show this side of your brand <clears throat> that you wanted to show, which is great. And you do you know you set up your profiles in the same way, but but other people can comment and they can have their intake. So if you were trying to put out, I'm the best brand in the world and this is my website and I'm awesome and look at all my stuff, but somebody comments going, uh, you're a thief, you did this, or like there's some you know drama going on in the comments, everyone's going to read that. And then that's also like, you know, someone to go, well, I don't, that's the reason I don't want social media, I don't want that happening. But actually that provides an opportunity for you as a brand to step up and go, hey, Sorry about that. Listen, let's have a chat. Did you get my email? Like you're showing the human side of the brand. That's like, I'm here. I'm ready to have a conversation. You know, I'm honest, all those kind of things. And I know for sure, I check, I always check brands on social media for even outside of being involved with social media. It's just my go to. It's again, buyer behavior. Like how do people, you know, and sometimes those are the, biz, the big business owners are older and they don't understand the way the things have changed in terms of the way people now think. They're just going, well, sure, they'll go to the shop or they'll go do this or their Google. It's like, yeah, some, but a lot of people now, especially if you're, if again, your ideal client comes back to that, if they're a little bit younger and even not even that much younger now these days, what's in their hand 24 seven, their phone, what's the easiest to access social media. So they're going to look at you on there, whether or not you can see the direct link to them going to your website from that is irrelevant if they're if they're using that to make a decision you've got to be present and you've got to have a good you know brand persona going on there and also that like on a, on a sort of a side note with that if you get negative comments sometimes they can be the best opportunity for you to get more clients because how you handle that publicly says so much more about you than if you hide it or delete it or ignore it or just shut everything down people will see and generally when people leave nasty comments on on you know facebook or instagram posts most people know that the person is in the wrong for doing it because they're saying it even if there is a problem they're saying it more than likely in a really nasty way and if you as the business come back professionally and say hey really sorry this happened and you feel this way really want to get the bonus would you mind sending me a direct message or can you send me on your email address and we can sort this out or could you give me more information i want to get to the bottom of this and everyone else is going to go ah fair place to them they're they're sorting it out they're they're decent they know what they're doing and that's it's really really important to show that as a brand as well yeah, definitely, because because uh, the, 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 one of the big, biggest things is that with social media that you can um, you can humanize your brand, which is mm. which is really key for any business. That no, it doesn't matter if you are healthcare or, or even construction; it doesn't really matter what yeah. type of business you are. And and then the, the other one is like you say is 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 like I always felt like it's a great way for well you, if you do it in a good way for customer service yeah. uh, attention help support feedback uh issues etc etc yeah could, uh, but then could be in a, in a negative way affecting a negative way if you don't have, if you do it wrongly yeah. so in the wrong way so you have to be you know you have to be a, you have to have a strategy to how to handle these issues or objections and then you need to have a, a professional you know like yeah. Karen, Karen and uh, social media experts and professionals to advise you as well because uh, you can't you can't just like okay i'm not gonna reply all these uh, complaints uh complaints yeah, on, a, on a delete <laughs> or i'm not gonna do this I'm gonna, you have to take action you have to do it in a professional way yeah. Uh, human way and, and, and with this sort of a strategy so we have been talking for a while and i, I know uh, well uh, we just want to remind people to ask any questions drop comments uh because karen is 
accepted to be here today, which is a pleasure for me. And uh, I know she's busy, and then is uh, we are having an hour of of Karen, which is honestly is is uh, it's like golden. So you need to take the opportunity to ask, ask us questions. I'm not an ex-social media expert, but you can ask me questions on SEO and other stuff. But you can ask Karen, who you have the opportunity, or ask questions about her, uh, her dog or her story, <laughs> because it's very interesting, that story as well. And uh, uh, my last question is about uh, what are your top tools, I believe, obviously, uh, within Instagram, uh, uh, and then if you recommend to follow someone on Instagram that you that you uh, want some apart from yourself, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Good question. So my top tools. So I, I'm a big fan of batching content. Um, and again, if you aren't batching content, like and again, some people like I've gone through phases where I wasn't in the zone to batch it or I felt like I wanted to do it. And sometimes if you're finding your voice, batching isn't quite ready for you. You mightn't be ready there yet. But if you are time poor at all, batching is definitely the way to go. And I recommend using latermedia.com for my batching. And um, you can also have tons of other tools. It's the one that I feel is the simplest one to use. Again, simplified social media. Um, they've got a great low. I mean, you can, there's a free version, there's, there's paid versions. They've, they've plenty of plans. Um, but if you go deep into them, they've great analytics on individual hashtags and all this kind of stuff as well, which is fantastic. So I think they're Great. So I love to use them to sit down, batch out the content for the week. And that's really powerful to do that. Canva is another one I think we're all in love with these days. That's great for, you know, creating everything and anything these days. You can even create a website on Canva now. It's wild. So really, really worth the 11 quid a month that it is because it's there's nothing Canva can't do these days. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, and then what else could I tell you that I use? Um, I love actually Mojo as an app um, for creating professional stories. So these are like, and I, I often, I use these mostly for when I'm creating highlights in a very strategic way. So if I want to create like a highlight to tell people about my program or what me, when I do my story, I'll use Mojo. So again, there's a free version. The paid version is like, I think 40 quid a year, which I think is worth it because it's really easy to use. It's just basically, you open it up, you take any template you want, you put in the text, you put in any photo, video, they have stock images, stock videos too. And it just instantly makes your stories look professional. So, you know, I think it's a really, really good tool to have in the days that you're kind of like, oh, like some days I'll just be like, I don't really want or have anything to post mm -hmm. in stories. Into Mojo I go, stick a quote in, put it around something fancy, bam, done. Looks like I've spent ages on, it takes two seconds. So that's a really handy little app to have as well. Um, other than that, let me see. I use Meta Hashtags website for checking out hashtags and finding the right hashtags too um that's uh there's a free version and a paid version again is that again i think i just i mean i pay for all these things because it's obviously my work and my profession but um there's always a free option available too so yeah that would that, that's all the main ones that i have used one things that else that i could give you that i use they're the main ones that i use in my day-to-day -day, i would say um and then in terms of counts to follow oh my goodness well oh, that's so, a difficult many. One. so many <laughs> um who am i following at the moment um i like uh scott olford i don't know if you know him and uh, he's he's on instagram but he's not loads on instagram i do like what he does um i do like sunny leonard doozy actually as well she's great she's a professional youtube for marketing so she does great programs and information she's a great youtube channel actually on all things youtube um, and, and social media marketing in general too. Um, and Small Dogs Big City for all your dog needs in Ireland is pretty good. Yeah, obviously, obviously. <laughs> and the simplified social media, right? Oh, yeah, no, that, no. One too, that one too. No, it's, it's, it's difficult to say for, for me as well, you know, when it comes to like following people, because yeah, I think obviously I, I, I follow you, uh, that's kind of saying I recommend it because and it's so simple to understand the way you express the, the, the content and the, even for you know people that for me that are not really good we didn't grow up with social media yeah. <laughs> like sometimes my first i spend like an hour to do my first reel like oh my god this video this oh my, my yeah. and i was like what, what the hell is this now i mean i have someone help me uh, but then but then uh, when i do myself it's like oh my god it's difficult but yeah. you get you get fast and it's about practice right yeah so exactly. and uh, when it comes to following people it's sometimes it's, 
depending on who is said, you know, having the mood for, or I think my advice would be don't follow it too many people because if yeah. you follow too many people, then when it comes to like, if you don't have enough, you don't have too much time, like me, for example, yeah. to go on an Instagram, if you follow less people of more quality, you will get more quality content that yeah. you can follow everyone. Because yeah. I, can, I, I, I could, I, I think this, if you follow any, everyone back, and that's this type of a strategy. You have thousands of people that you follow. It's hard yeah. that you can get the can the content, the more quality content that you want to get. So yeah. I would suggest maybe following only the ones that really bring you value, and then you can, if you get yeah. less time, you get more, more quality in this time rather than loss of them. I give you a little, trick, a little trick as well that I use. So if there's accounts that I like, especially they're, that they're maybe in my industry, but I don't necessarily want to follow them because I'm trying to more follow my ideal clients and engage with them because I want to spend my time engaging with them. I'll instead save their posts in Instagram. So you go to save and you, you make a collection of like, you know, inspiration posts or info about reels or something and title it that. And then you have, you can go into your save folders and you can look at the different ones rather than getting them all the time in a news feed you can actually go in and decide when to interact with them yourself so that can take a bit of pressure off the news feed then that's, that's a great tip actually because because I, I i believe most people that if they're connecting or watching or following and they'd be like oh my god i haven't got enough time i'm just doing my taking my social when i'm in the train commuting or yeah. in the toilet <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? And it's like, oh, oh, this, this, that, I'm making my tea, and then I go run into meetings and stuff. And it's, it's good to get those advice on how to make yeah, the best yeah. and how to save things for the for later. Yeah. So well, it's, 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 it's we unfortunately we uh, we got to the the end of uh, of this uh, live uh, session, and uh, yeah, it's been it's been an absolutely. Uh, pleasure and um, you know honor to have you uh, it's been so much fun to be honest it's been it's gone really quick it's been an hour of conversation with you and uh, i encourage people to ask any questions or any comments uh, at any time when you watch replay uh, yeah. a comment saying replay hashtag replay or ask ask any sort of questions about your social media or your business or any struggle or what you're doing or how you feel I mean, you might be struggling with something, might be able to have a conversation and can uh, and and reply on with your marketing. Oh, yeah, definitely. And uh, yeah, just tell tell people how they can find you. And uh, I already been sharing <laughs> yeah. some some stuff in there. But if you yeah. if you can tell people how they can find uh, you on social and how they can connect with you, that would be great yes and thank you so much for having me on it's been so much fun um yeah you guys can find me the best place is instagram um at the simplified social media you will see me there and i will be on there pretty frequently so feel free to reach out <laughs> amazing great stuff thank, thanks for uh, thanks for for uh, for uh, being today with uh, well this is the first of uh, a series of uh, of uh, great interviews and i couldn't i couldn't think of a better Better, better first one. Better, better. Oh, thank better you. Guest. It's my privilege. <laughs> I guess. So, uh, wish you the very best and, uh, well, stay in touch on social and, and, yeah, uh, and, see, and yeah. see you around the gram. <laughs> in the real world as well. Take <laughs> <laughs> care yourself and bye, everyone. Thanks, thank everyone. You. For bye, guys. Bye. Bye.